So in this video, we're going to discuss the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway, which is a bit of a mouthful, but basically what it is, is the pathway in order for us to be able to sense at our cortex, our sensory cortex, fine touch, two point discrimination, and also proprioception. And proprioception has to do with where you are in your own space, okay? So this is a sensory pathway, obviously, which means it's an ascending pathway. So it's going up the spinal cord towards the brain. Now this may be a sensation that's coming from my toe or my leg or my hand or my joints, for example. And what, one really important piece of information that you need to be aware of is that all ascending sensory pathways to the brain are a three neuron chain. That means there's only three neurons associated with, for example, if someone were to touch my finger, in order for me to be aware of it in my somatosensory cortex, remember where is the somatosensory cortex? You have that central gyrus, or sorry, the central sulcus, and behind the central sulcus is a bump called the postcentral gyrus. That's the somatosensory cortex. So if I need to understand or feel somebody touching my finger, it's a three neuron chain going from my finger into my spinal cord, up to my medulla, to my thalamus, to my cortex, three neurons. So the very first thing I wanna do is show you the most simplistic schematic of this pathway and compare it to another ascending sensory pathway, which is the pain pathway. So let's have a look. So the first thing you need to draw up is the brain. Now what type of section have I performed here? I've performed a coronal section, also known as a frontal section. So we've got the brain or the cerebrum, we've got the midbrain, we have the pons, and we have the medulla. I'm not gonna draw the cerebellum today because we're not talking about it. And then the spinal cord going down. Okay, so I wanna tell you that if somebody again were to touch my finger, so fine touch, remember this is the pathway we're talking about, fine touch. So maybe it's the sensation of me holding a pen, for example. How does this pathway get to my brain? So very simply, you need to stimulate a sensory neuron, let's say in my finger, it will go into the spinal cord and on the same side of the spinal cord that it enters, it jumps into the white matter. Now remember, you've got gray matter and white matter. Gray matter are where all the bodies of the neurons sit. That's where all the information comes into play. That's where we make sense of information. It's interpreted. And the white matter, it's simply the highways. Okay, so that's the axons. So something that's stimulated my finger will go into my spinal cord on the same side of the spinal cord it will go up the white matter tracks so it goes up now it's going to go remember you got the midbrain the pons and the medulla when it gets to the medulla that's where it's going to synapse with the second neuron remember there's three neurons that's the first neuron it synapses with the second and here at the medulla the second neuron will cross to the other side this crossing is called decussation. So the second order neuron is the neuron that decussates. Then it's on the other side of the body now and it continues to ascend. Now it's gonna keep going up. There's two structures I haven't drawn. They are the thalmi or the thalamus. You're gonna have here and here. Remember the thalamus is the gateway to the cortex. So any sensory information that's coming up, if you wanna be aware of it, it has to go through the cortex first. It's like the postal service. If you need to send a parcel somewhere, it must go to the postal service first so they can sort it. They can have a look and see where it's supposed to go. So this signal's coming up. It goes to the thalamus, synapses with the third order neuron. And then this third order neuron goes to where it finally needs to get to, which is the somatosensory cortex at the postcentral gyrus. Now remember, there's a topographical map of the body on the somatosensory cortex, which tells you, you know, it's gonna have, for example, over here it's gonna have the pharynx and larynx and then the head, and then it's gonna have the hand and then the arm and then the trunk and then the knee and leg and genitals. Now this is coming from the hand, so it shouldn't be going there if I want to be a bit more accurate. It should be going around about here. And this is the three neuron chain for Fine touch, two-point discrimination, and proprioception. Into the spinal cord, A sends up the same side of the spinal cord, synapses with the second order neuron at the medulla, so let's label medulla.
It then ascends up on the opposing side of the body until it hits the thalamus. So let's label the thalamus. And then the thalamus will sort it and send it to the somatosensory cortex. Now that's a very simplistic view of how this pathway goes up. Now I want to compare it to that of the pain pathway. Now the pain pathway is also an ascending sensory pathway, but it actually travels to the brain through a different set of tracks. Let's have a look. Again, let's say that I prick my finger. So before I touched it, now I'm pricking the exact same part of my finger. So let's use the pain pathway in red. Now this green pathway, I'm just going to write up. Remember it's called the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. I'll tell you about what all those terms mean shortly, but let's write D, C, dorsal column, M, medial lemniscus pathway to represent that. Now let's look at the pain pathway. So I prick my finger and the signal will go into the spinal cord. Now here's one of the differences. As soon as the pain uh, neuron gets into the spinal cord, that's where it synapses with its second order neuron. More importantly, it's also where it decussates or crosses over to the other side of the body. And then it begins to ascend. So it goes up all the way up the spinal cord, it bypasses the brainstem, so it bypasses the medulla, the pons and the midbrain, and then goes to the thalamus. Remember, every sensory input that we need to be aware of, we need to be aware of pain, has to go to the thalamus first. And then it synapses with its third order neuron, and then it goes to where it needs to get to. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this, again, this is the pain pathway. Now, it's not just pain, it's actually the pain and temperature pathway. And of course, it's not called the pain and temperature pathway, just like this green one isn't called the fine touch or proprioceptive or two-point discrimination pathway. It's got a complex name. The complex name for pain and temperature is spinothalamic, and that's simply because it goes from the spine to the thalamus. Easy. All right, why am I showing you this? It's really important for a couple of reasons. One is, what's the most apparent thing that you can see that's different between the two? Well, you can see that touch goes up one side of the spinal cord, actually the same side it enters, that's called ipsilateral, if, it goes, if it's the same side. Pain goes up the contralateral, this is the opposing side of the spinal cord. This is important because if an individual gets some sort of injury or maybe a lesion, so some sort of damage to one side of the spinal cord, let's just say here, what does that mean in regards to what type of sensations they can or cannot feel? Well, have a look. An individual who has a lesion, for example, let's just say this is the left side and this is the right side. An individual who has a lesion on the left-hand side of their spinal cord, they will not feel pain or temperature on the contralateral side below the level of injury. You can see that because it's stopping the pain pathway from going up. But they will be able to feel touch on the contralateral side below the injury. Now remember, all these signals aren't just coming in from one side, they're coming in from this side as well, which means if we were to very simply draw it up again, coming in this side, here's touch, goes up that same side, which it did over there, synapses at the medulla, crosses over, goes to the other thalamus, and then goes to the cortex, and then pain, pain's going to come in, synapse, then cross, then go up to the thalamus synapse and go over there. So again, here's that lesion on one side. And what I said before was that a lesion on one side of a spinal cord may mean that the individual will not feel pain on the contralateral side below the level of injury, but they will feel fine touch on the contralateral side below the injury, but they will not feel fine touch on the ipsilateral, the same side, below the level of injury, but they will feel pain and temperature on the ipsilateral side below the level of injury. Now, obviously, that takes a bit of time to sort of work through your head, but hopefully it makes sense. This is one of the reasons why if somebody's in a, sp uh, in a car crash to test the spinal injury, they'll sometimes touch the patient or rub down their legs, so touch them, that's fine touch, or they'll get an ice cube, for example, or an ice pack, and rub it down the leg and ask them if they feel that because they're feeling two different pathways. 
two different pathways coming up and it helps to distinguish whether there's an injury on one side of the body or an injury on the other side of the body. All right, that's the first thing I wanted to talk about.